So the first topic here, uh, we're going to discuss the Batman to jumpstart global box office with $225 million launch. Now they mean global launch, obviously. <laughs> um, so uh, I found a bunch of topics related to this and some also some other stuff connected to it through AMC. And this says, uh, in the wake of Sony Spider-Man's No Way Home, uh, rattling box office, uh, rattling box office records. Is that a phrase? I think it is. Okay, that would mean to me, and we have to read forward in this article, figure it out. Did they get close to, but not break? Like they, they are they broke a ton of records, so it feels shouldn't be shattering some, box office. Well, records? sometimes when you say rattling, it's like, it's like they have made nervous. So there's mm -hmm. like. If they've already broken some, but there's some bigger ones that they're working to, maybe those ones are like quaking in their boots because they're about to get broken. I find one of my favorite things to do when I'm reading these articles is like critique phrases they use. Yeah. I don't mean to, but it's always like... It, I have sympathy for this because there. It, it seems, unless my theory is right, that they're trying to imply that like other future records that might be broken are nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, you you want to <clears throat> avoid cliches, right? Anyone yeah. would say shattering. So what's another way to say shattering? Um, Rattling doesn't seem to it's not feel like different. Quite what I would have picked. Destroying like, box office records. Unless that's records. what they mean. Yeah. they're saying like it has its eyes on the all-time record or whatever. <laughs> it's just, Who wrote I, this article? I gotta be like uh, looking out for you, Anthony and Nancy. <laughs> yes, we are. We're we're going for you. So it says. Uh, uh, with it rattling box office records and creating gra a gravitational pull towards cinemas with $1.85 billion global gross, Warner Brothers' The Batman is looking to keep the big screen rally going. Industry projections for the Robert Pattinson movie stand at about $115 to $125 million domestic and another $110 to $120 million overseas for a global reach of $225 to $245 million. Uh, the movie, which carries a production cost of $200 million. That was the other article I had pulled up here. This was originally um, put at about $100 million, But what happened was this got this was being filmed in literally the height of, uh, of COVID-19. So this had multiple uh, production shutdowns. Robert Pattinson tested positive for COVID. I noticed they never said that he had it. They just said he tested positive for it. So they had to automatically quarantine for two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and anytime there's a delay, you're losing money. Mm -hmm. And a two-week delay with the star of your movie. And one of the, the funny thing is, I read, I don't remember, it was in one of the reviews. This is one of those few movies where I'm confident enough in it that I was able to watch reviews for it before going to see it. Normally, I try to avoid doing that to sure. avoid being yeah. uh, predisposed to an opinion. They said he's in almost every scene of the movie. So if he's in almost every scene of the movie and they had to shut down for two weeks, that's a lot of money that they're out. Yeah. Well, the product, the production is just halted. This isn't one of those like work from home Zoom jobs that nope. you could, like. It's not like he can be like, well, on the days that I'm like quarantined, I can do my voiceovers. No, nope, like, you can't. Kind of, kind of. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, so what I thought was interesting about this, so it's got a production budget of two hundred million. Uh, if you do the standard marketing uh, rule of thumb, which is the the budget times one point five gives you your full cost all in of what it costs to make this movie. That comes to about three hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. uh, and that's low end because I'm guessing that advertising was dull. Yeah, it's probably higher than that. Yeah, given that bigger movies like this are going to have a bigger push. Uh, so let's just say low end, it costs $300 million to make. Now, domestically, if the studio is going to, um, when they release these things to studios, the studio keeps 60 and the theater keeps 40% of the revenue. So remember, when it, when it makes $100 million that weekend, that it's not $100 million that goes to to Warner Brothers, that $100 million just split 60-40 with the theater chains, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and then it's even small, it's an even smaller uh, amount overseas. It's 20 to, the, the studio only gets 20 to 40%. Uh, so I did like the, basically the math came out to like, if they, if they make, a, I, I guesstimated low end for both of it. So mm -hmm. if it makes uh, 115 million in, in the US and that's 60, 60% uh, of that's like 69 million. And if it makes 40% of the 110 million, which was the low end estimate overseas, mm -hmm. uh, that comes to 44 million. So that's 113 million it'll make in its big first weekend, which is still less than half of the budget. Yeah, it's got a long way to go. I can't imagine like what it's like to be the producer of the studio that's like, okay, here's how we're gonna set the budget for this. Because we hear you made a hundred million dollars in your first weekend, like that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, we have not even reached the the, the red. I mean, not we're, we're not close. even in the black right now. We no. we're still in. You know, we've still spent on this movie, which is wild. Can you imagine making a hundred million dollars and then being like, 
two got to got to do that two more times. Yep. Mm -hmm. So so this is where like we talked about with Spider-Man uh or even with Uncharted and Dog both having good word of mouth. This movie needs excellent word of mouth if it's going to make that money. Uh less and less common is are these movies making all their money in the first weekend. The goal you should be looking for is strong word of mouth with fans uh critics I guess as well, but if fans have strong word of mouth, uh, the week to week turnover, meaning the drops from week to week will be yeah. smaller, which means the f movie has longer legs. I mean, Spider-Man's literally still in theaters right mm -hmm. now. It really? it's, it's still in theaters. Um, uh, it's probably just exiting right now, probably waited for. Uh, and that's why they moved Morbius because they didn't want it to have to take away from the money that Spider-Man was making. It's one of the parallels that I always see between movies and like Broadway shows because like they could run for years, they could run for eight weeks and like, be done it really depends you know critics are only going to see it a certain amount of times you need people who are regularly buying tickets the yeah. hype and the interest still have to be there um and so in, in that sense like i'm curious to see when did this come out it comes out uh, technically comes out the first tonight. showings were tuesday for fans like people had to buy early tickets to get okay tuesday so showings. early release was tuesday and then there was some when there was wednesday showings but and this then, is like the first big night it's open to everyone i believe well i well I, I, there was I showings Friday. all wednesday no there were showings all wednesday too yeah, but Friday's the official day. That's what YouTube said in their trailer release. It's uh what I what I've found is like opening weekend is like a misnomer now for big yeah. movies. Opening weekend really means like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. Saturday. Well, I was gonna say like if their premiere is Friday to yeah. most point, like but they are like but we already know we made some because it's like how do you make money if you haven't premiered yet? Yes. Um, so, uh, but it'll be interesting to see if it's Friday this weekend how it gets picked up on social media because yeah. i feel like that's going to be the big mm -hmm. deriving uh, uh, force at this point the critic reviews i've seen from independent critics meaning not ones writing these articles the ones on youtube the ones you have uh, uh the best thing you can do is find critics who uh, are in line with your sensibilities meaning mm -hmm. that they've reviewed movies before you watch that movie and you felt roughly the same and you can gauge uh, yeah. how similar your tastes are because a lot of times it just comes down to enjoying different things a movie you really love might get a a bad review from somebody else doesn't mean it's a bad movie it just might not sure. be what that person or likes. like miracle might like a movie mm -hmm. and write about it but the reason that you love the movie might be different exactly. and so therefore her next review may not align with your taste so, mm -hmm. so based on the the reviews that i've seen from critics that i tend to uh not tr trust is a bad word for it, but the ones that I found that I share similar opinions on on a lot of things have been very, very good, and it's get, been getting strong word of mouth. Uh, and it, like it says, one point seven million dollars already with uh, previews overseas, and I think it did about the same. I, I, the Wednesday and the uh, early Tuesday showings did good numbers as well. And then uh, it says down here, it says as far as domestic goes, Batman already began with seven p.m. showings tonight in three hundred and fifty IMAX locations. Uh, and this article is from yesterday. It was from the first. So this was uh, two days ago. Mm -hmm. So it's already got two days of like IMAX screenings under its belt. Uh, as far as domestic roast, the Batman already began with 7 p.m. shows tonight at 350 IMAX locations, and the world premiere in New York City is set for 7 p.m. showtimes tomorrow. Thursday night previews in 3,300 locations. So the, yeah, like there's less theaters showing it on Wednesday and Thursday, but it goes wide to it's all the release. locations. Uh, uh, on Friday, but 3,300 locations early previews is still a lot of locations. It's mm -hmm. it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's. I might even argue that it's just the premiere. Yeah, mm -hmm. go figure. <laughs> Warner is spotting at least 90 million dollars domestic at 4,217 screens. That's a lot, or 4,217 theaters. That's a lot of theaters. Mm. Uh, 12,500 screens. Yeah, so uh, one of the things going that will detract from this is this movie is very long, which means it gets less showings per day per screen. Mm. Uh, two hour, like the, the one thing I think this film has going against it, uh, I, I don't know if the dark tone works against it because I feel like that's a staple for Batman. Uh, the, the two hours and 55 minute length is a real, uh, commitment. It's a mm -hmm. time commitment that you have to, I, I was even wrong about Spider-Man. I think I said, I was like, what is like two hours and 46 minutes? You said, no, it was like two hours and 20 yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So, I, was gonna say, I thought Spider-Man was considered long too. Yeah. So this is, this is very long up there. And so in fact, I'm going to, I'm just curious as to, um, well, like Ever since like working this job, I didn't realize that you can premiere movies like earlier than what it says mm -hmm. on the re release date. So that kind of blew my mind. So yep. 
maybe if you guys don't want the crowd around you. It's sitting at 85% on the tomato meter and 96% audio, audience score. Is this Batman? This is, yeah. This is, mm -hmm. So it's, there's 250 verified ratings on the Batman for uh, audience, and that's at 96. There's 233 critics reviews at 85%. Mm. I tend to trust audiences more than I trust critics. It's just notable that it's having a positive rating in both so far yep as we saw i mean last time we remember we talked about the fact that like it started off at like 94 and then it, and it, it always dipped goes down, down. So it dropped it's dropped nine percent but yep. it seems like it's holding steady it didn't continue to tank yes. uh, it wasn't just that the, the critics who got there first were excited and it's it is you know like you're totally right i tend to look at the audience report more but yep. like it is notable that the people who actually had to pay to go see well it. when there's like a discrepancy and critics are like this movie's amazing mm -hmm. and then everyone else is like no it's not yep you know it tends to be like but why are you usually if the audience score is really high and the critic score is really low it's a it's a it's sign a that movie. it's awesome that it's awesome so. yeah <laughs> um so then uh the batman this just goes into the costs of what what it costs to make here i just i only got this one for reference as far as um what the cost per movie were uh very high production budget but then this is another article that's connected to it but this could be very bad for the movie going industry and says amc is charging more for batman tickets ceo on variable pricing and transformational m a bad 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 idea i think what's uh, their justification uh I, we're about let's read through and find out but all i know is that um this is not something i, I don't think this is something that they can carry through uh long term uh, I imagine that uh, people are going to look at this and feel like they're being gouged. Yeah. Um, so. Well, it also starts to be like, is it really that good? Yes. Like, is it worth the extra? Would it lead to more people asking for their money back? If yeah. like, I paid more for this and it was well, that bad. That's why, like, you know, you pay more for IMAX. I would get that. Like, what is the reason it's it's a longer movie or we're just trying to catch it, yeah. like capture the excitement. So here's, here's what he says. He says, currently, this is uh, Adam uh, Aaron, the CEO of AMC, says, uh, currently our prices for the Batman are slightly higher than the prices we are charging for other movies playing in the same theaters at the same time, Aaron said, during a, web a webcast following quarterly earnings. He said the move follows a few years after it successfully raised weekend prices above midweek levels at some of its U.S. locations. People probably had an easier time accepting that because that feels like weekend versus midweek is mm -hmm. like uh, matinee versus uh, primetime uh, movie hours. That's a lot easier to accept than paying for a movie and paying different prices. Yeah. Uh, it just feels different to me. It says, this is all quite novel in the United States, but actually AMC has been doing it for a, a few years in our European theaters. Well, good for them. We're not Europe and we don't. Mm -hmm. What if we, instead of charging more by the movie, we just charge all movies based on how long they are or like how much CGI, right? Oh, man. That, that, <laughs> all the Marvel movies would just cost a gazillion it's dollars. It's sort of like an hourly rate yeah. plus some. Mm -hmm. Like it's 50 cents for every you know hour but then also for every like nominated oscar or nominated actor but which i wouldn't really want all the movies are free 25 cents for every like you know cgi scene there is <laughs> per hour and then you get like it starts ending being like five to seven dollars an hour and mm -hmm. so if it's two hours you're paying 14 dollars. but if it's under the two hour mark you know it starts to be a deal yeah who's the poor uh guy who has to figure all this out there is some statistician or economic who would we be like, We can ask about Andrew. It. He's a math <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love that. I also, like, then it would be interesting to see if movie theaters or, or production companies make the decision to, like, stick. Less CGI. Because, like, this is longer than what we kind of think is the natural competitor, Spider-Man, right? Mm -hmm. uh, by at least, what, 30 minutes? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, uh, almost 30 minutes. That's that's 30 minutes. That's a, a lot long of movie. time. Uh, and so then there would be other people who are like, no, no, you know how we'll drive people to us? We'll just produce short movies. So the tickets, are, the, the tickets, tickets, sorry, the chickens, <laughs> the tickets are less expensive. And therefore, you know, people are like, and then you discover new directors who have smaller mm -hmm. budgets because their films yep. have less time. I think this is a genius idea because I, I say, came up with it on the spot right now. I say all movies are the same price or free. And then you tip based communism. on how good it is. Oh, who are we tipping though? What if I only want to tip like the set department? That you, yeah, you get a, you get a, like a, a pull down menu of who you want to tip. You have to say like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tip five dollars, but you know, four dollars is gonna go here, and I'll, I guess I'll give Rob Pattinson fifty cents. That'd be kind of funny. He needs it. Does he? No, he does not. I'm actually excited to see him in this. I did not watch any of his other things, mm -hmm. but I have seen him interviewed several times, and I find him kind of amusing. I recommend you uh, watch a movie called The Lighthouse. 
okay. uh, with William Defoe. Uh, just to, you might, I, I think you might enjoy it. It's okay. very different. It's very indie. I mean, that's how he got. That's how he got the reputation he has now of being such a being an actor who successfully evolved from his earlier roles as he got away from Hollywood and went and did more independent films. Well, I almost sent you this uh, clip of him and is it Zoe Kravis who plays Catwoman in yes. the movie? Yeah. And they're doing, you know, a press junket and mm -hmm. she says something like, it's, I think the person asked her like, who's your favorite Twilight character? And she's yeah. like, I never saw Twilight, sorry. Oof. And he goes, what you hate this is Robert Patton, yeah. he's like, what you hate Twilight? That's so 2010. Like yes. even he's over it, which is yeah. like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think <clears throat> again like i'm surprised by how curious about this movie i am you guys yep. will have to tell me when you get back yep. yeah i just it. think i just think it's funny because i didn't realize he was in the heart um harry potter movies he played cedric diggory yeah yeah and like a fun fact about his character so when he was playing that role they told him to hold the wand a certain way and, and he like, wanted to hold it like a, a gun, gun instead yeah because yeah. he said it looks more manly just it's great hilarious. i don't know how I th what i think about that i think it's i would have to dissect i mean i knew, I, I read that because mm -hmm. I, we I was going to cover it but i'm like do i really want to dissect like is it uh is he doing the the role a disservice by feeling like he's got to change it or is he being smart and proactive no. about his uh, about his approach I, I don't know i i like those kind of like actor led decisions yeah. because it's not disruptive it doesn't take mm -hmm. away you're not like staring at him like why is he holding it that way it's not like he like put it behind his ear right yeah like, but it also adds a level of like detail to his character that even if he is the only one who notices, that character is more real because of mm -hmm. it. Also, Voldemort carried it differently, and the he carried yeah. it between the he these two fingers. I mean, it feels he like held it like this. Yes, mm -hmm. it, rather than which is interesting. It also feels more like that. Um, you know, more like handwriting in a way. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and so I I assume one of the reasons that. You know, Robert Pattinson, I, I haven't read any reviews of his performance. I probably wouldn't before seeing it. Yeah. But I am curious to see some someone who has this, like, sort of attention to detail for the characters they develop mm -hmm. and portray, how he takes on Batman. Yep. Yeah, because so, he does, like, know the material. And he does, like, were you here when we were covering an article where he does want to do more Batman movies? Uh, he's, I he's, heard him he, say that. I don't remember mm -hmm. if we talked about it on the he's show. He's versed in the source material. Yeah. Uh, he can reference specific storylines from particular uh, interview or from particular comic runs. So he clearly uh, read up. So it's saying right here it says the Batman. Uh, the tickets are at eighteen ninety nine. Where they're a dollar more than the other tickets. So is it? Are you? Are you? Squat, you know? Are you like making a big deal over a dollar? I think it's stupid. Well, the thing but, is, like. It's just enough where it's a difference, mm -hmm. but also like you're probably not going to like if you go to the theater and you go with all of your friends or your parent and you bring your like mm -hmm. teenagers and their friends or whatever, like, no, you're probably not gonna be like, it's a dollar more. So pick a different movie, but you are going to feel that dollar. Yep. Like yeah. if you have enough people or if you go to the movies frequently enough, like those end up being other tickets that adds up. So, so. It, we'll, we'll see. I, honestly, I feel like the, a dollar difference, they'll probably get away with it. A dollar, I think they will. When you get up, I would say like two fifty. People are starting to be like, yeah, I don't know. yeah. So, so we'll see. I just, I thought that was interesting. Like, of course, like they didn't roll this out for Dog or for or, or for even for Uncharted. They did it for the Batman. Well, they didn't go back and change it for the Spider Man movies that are still out. They're not still char They're not charging more for the Spider Man no. ones, as far as I can tell. Nope. So yeah, so that I thought that was interesting, and it connects like they're like uh, they didn't roll this out earlier either. Like where like like by the way, next month when we go release the Batman tickets are going to be more expensive. They waited till the weekend it was coming you're out. Like to... you're already excited. <laughs> you're already gonna go. You're already hooked on Bat Crack, and you're gonna need to go and see Is this movie. Is that the official term for that? That's what I. Yeah. Oh, it's like that, and then there's Super Math for Superman for the characters doing drugs. How and fun and Superman wholesome. and Lois. Yes, it's very very wholesome don't do drugs kids trust me it's very bad for you unless it's called jingle jingle i don't know what from that is. it's from riverdale like oh. their their version of meth is called jingle jangle and it's like in a pixie stick tube that and, is hilarious yeah and also weird <laughs> in uh in, in, in superman and lois they're in inhalers i'm like where are these kids getting bl like empty inhalers also to they're do like this? don't trust random consumer products yeah exactly is it your inhaler at school are they doing drugs it's like a black inhaler. It was like a it's like a black and yellow inhaler. So it's very orange. dark. Oh, was it orange? It's okay. orange. All right. Well, there, there you go. Mm -hmm. Miracle is paying very close attention. Thank you. 
Yeah, but I, those details, just like the wand thing, like mm-hmm. they do make a difference, yes, right? They do. Yeah, I just want to see somebody hold a wand, like because I actually seen a person hold a pencil like this before. So I want to see somebody hold like their a dart. Wand, like, yeah. I feel like I don't <laughs> That's know. Like a paper airplane. If you had, hold on, I'm gonna try and do it with my straw. Like if you had a wand, I don't know how I would hold it because I think they kind of hold it like underhand, so their yeah. wrist is up. Andy's gonna kill me if I drip coffee on any of our electronics. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you. <laughs> Andy's like, who did this? He. He just like comes in here in a rage because he, he can, can sense it. He's about to appear <laughs> yeah. through the floor. He, he, he's like, I, he's got like a sensor that senses like when liquid goes over some type of electronic yeah. surface. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.